All good. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my talk today at ECC. It's the second year in a row that I've presented here. My name is Clara. I am the research director at Kaiko. Uh, so essentially, I analyze markets all day. Um, but Kaiko is a cryptocurrency market data provider. Uh, we've been around since 2014, and today we collect data from more than 100, both centralized and decentralized exchanges. This ranges from Coinbase to Binance to Uniswap to Curve. So I'm very excited to do some analyses today looking at Kaiko's newly launched DEX liquidity pack. Today we collect all mints, burns, and swaps from some of the most liquid decentralized exchanges um, on the Ethereum blockchain. And this is by far the most granular data that exists in cryptocurrency markets today. So first, we are two years out from DeFi summer. This was the summer of 2020, and we saw record inflows and interest and general enthusiasm for decentralized protocols and exchanges. Um, this was the first time that DEXs actually proved their ability uh, to effectively foster price discovery. So what has changed since then? For one, Ethereum transaction fees are actually at multi-year lows now, so that's definitely helped DEXs over the past few months. Uh, but today I'm going to focus on two key market trends that have happened over the past few months. The first is the collapse of US Terra and the Terra blockchain, and then the second is the staked Ether discount. And I'm gonna specifically look at the role of DEXs um, in these two very pivotal market events. But first, my favorite chart, here we have Uniswap's market share compared to Coinbase. Um, and this is just since January 2022. We can see that it has increased from 25% to nearly 50%. So at this point, Uniswap and Coinbase have almost equal daily trading volume. This is huge for decentralized exchanges. Um, what has caused such a sharp shift in market structure? I'll get to that later in the presentation. Um, but overall, I think very positive for the entire DeFi industry. But again, all trends need to be viewed in context. So overall, DEXs um, still don't account for that much market share of total volume. Here I've charted total DEX um, volume compared with just the top three centralized exchanges. These are Binance, Coinbase, and FTX. Um, and again, these are only Ethereum-based DEXs, but Ethereum-based DEXs still account for the majority of total volume. We can see here that Binance accounts for the vast majority of total global market volume. Um, so again, it's sort of an unfair comparison, but it still shows that DEXs still have a ways to go in terms of market structure. Now let's dive into the actual state of DEX activity. Um, and we can see here that it's actually Uniswap V3 specifically that today accounts for the vast majority of market share. So I want to mention that today Kaiko collects data from Ethereum mainnet. We cover the most liquid DEXs there. We're not covering other chains or layer twos. But even when I compared data um, from other data providers, I could see that the trend actually holds. Uniswap, Uniswap V3 accounts for the vast majority of market share. Um, so why is this? Uh, I think when, v, uh, when Uniswap launched their concentrated liquidity, it very quickly siphoned a lot of volume away from other DEXs. It's a very efficient way to um, uh, allocate capital, um, and it's very competitive to Curve's uh, stable, stable swap invariant. So overall, that was just the first part of this presentation, just showing the state of DEX market structure today. Uniswap v3 is dominant, but of course, Binance is still the dominant exchange, um, and DEXs still have a way to, ways to go. So now we're going to dive into the first of two market trends that I'll look at today. Um, this is the state in the role of DEXs as the UST stablecoin collapsed, specifically how they facilitated record high stablecoin volume. So as UST depegged, as the entire market ecosystem reacted to this uh, cataclysmic market event, we had record high stablecoin volumes. Here I've charted the aggregated USDC, UST trading volume. This is the most liquid stablecoin pair that exists in crypto across all exchanges. We can see that on May 12th, volumes surged to record highs, um, and this was right as UST completely depegged. USDT also started trading at a discount. So what's the role of DEXs during this huge market event? Here I charted the total market share of volume within this specific currency pair. So this is all USDC, USDT pairs. Um, the orange exchanges, those are centralized, and then the blue tones are decentralized. We can see here that DEXs actually play 
an inordinate role in total market share for stablecoin swaps. And I think this is really interesting because it shows that although DEXs don't have uh, market share for global volume, they have actually found a niche in stablecoin swaps um, and today account for almost a majority of market share. Binance still holds the top spot, but Uniswap V3 and Curve hold the second and third places. But again, a DEX is only as good as its ability to foster efficient price discovery. So here I've charted the actual price for centralized and decentralized exchanges for, again, the USDC and USDT trading pair. Um, and we get an interesting trend. So on centralized exchanges, price efficiency is pretty good. Prices closely follow the others. Um, there tends to be lower slippage compared with DEXs, but we notice an exception. On Uniswap v3 and on Curve, the price actually very closely mimics that of what we saw on centralized exchanges. So this just shows that a lot of DEXs are actually able to efficiently foster these stable markets. For stable coins, it's very important. You're supposed to get a one-to-one -one exchange rate. So if you actually have volatility, uh, you're not gonna get large traders that will wanna use this market. Some other DEXs, they have a bit more issues when it comes to volatility for stable coins, but I will say that that's more of an issue with total value locked. Uniswap V3 and Curve actually have the highest TVL for stable coin pairs today. So that's the first part of my presentation. Um, and just to summarize, I think it shows that DEXs have really found a niche in stable coin swaps, um, although total market share is still small relative to centralized exchanges. So the next trend I'm going to look at specifically focuses on staked Ether. So for those who don't know what staked Ether is, um, you can deposit Ethereum in anticipation of the merge in a protocol that issues one staked Ether for each Ethereum deposited. So this is essentially what's called a liquid staking token. It gives you liquidity um, before the merge happens. And so after the merge happens, anyone can actually redeem one staked ETH for Ethereum. So it's not technically a stable coin. However, it is expected to trade one-to-one -to, -one to Ethereum. Um, but as Terra collapsed, we actually saw a discount emerge on Curve. So before I dive into this discount, Curve was the most liquid secondary market for staked Ether. Um, before, uh, as the collapse was happening, we saw that it accounted for 98.5% of total staked, staked Ether volume. So this just shows the huge role that DEXs play in a relatively small cryptocurrency that ended up playing a very big role in the credit crisis that's going on today. So Curve, again, accounted for the vast majority of market share. Centralized exchanges had very low liquidity. So here's when the discount first emerged. This was right in the aftermath of the collapse. We saw staked Ether start trading at a discount to Ether. So the exchange rate went from one to one to about 0.98. Um, and as markets started to collapse even further, then we saw that exchange rate dip even lower. So this is when rumors started circulate, circulating about Celsius's exposure to the staked Ether, to staked Ether. Um, it came out that they had actually held a lot of user funds in staked Ether. And so the issue is that staked Ether it's not an issue if you are a long-term holder of staked Ether. No matter what, you can always redeem one-to-one -one after the merge. But if you need quick liquidity for staked Ether, that's when a discount becomes a big problem. Because if you need to exit your position and enter a more liquid cryptocurrency, which is Ethereum in this case, um, then you're not gonna get a good price for your asset and you're actually gonna end up with a lot of losses. So as this discount worsened, um, that's when Celsius actually halted withdrawals. And again, it's not because of staked Ether. It was actually egregious risk management on multiple different fronts. Um, that's what caused withdrawals to halt. But staked Ether did play a tiny role in the liquidity crisis that we see today. So Kaiko's data lets us actually chart snapshot um, block by block uh, ratio of reserves for all liquidity pair, uh, pools that we cover. So we can actually see how the breakdown in assets in these pools evolved over time. So here we see uh, the staked ETH ETH pool on curve and we can see the 50-50 balance by May 1st, but we can see that the imbalance slowly emerged over time and today it remains highly imbalanced. Today it's 76.24. And so we have a surplus of staked ether currently in this liquidity pool. Um, and this is because traders are exiting their staked Ether positions um, in hopes of getting Ethereum, which in this case is seem, seen as a less risky asset. Now let's take a look at the total value locked. 
So I always like to denominate total value locked in the native units. So beware when you're looking at other uh, DEX aggregators when they're showing it denominated in US dollars because you often get price effects in play. Um, when you're denominating it in native units, you can actually see the raw number of crypto assets held in these pools. So here, even though um, it's not denominated in USD, we can see that there was a sharp drop off for both the staked ETH, ETH pool and the three pool, which are two of the highest, uh, most liquid pools on Curve. But it's not just Curve, most DEXs have also seen a sharp drop off in total value locked across markets. Um, so I was curious, did the same thing happen on centralized exchanges? DEXs have had, have seemed to be impacted a lot by the volatility. Um, I think DEX providing liquidity on a DEX is a lot different than on a centralized exchange. Uh, specifically, there's more risk involved with impermanent loss. So to see what happened on centralized exchanges, I charted the market depth on both, uh, on for the most liquid pairs, these are the Bitcoin dollar and the Ethereum dollar pairs, and I aggregated this across uh, the most liquid centralized exchanges, including Coinbase, Binance US, Bitstamp, etc. We can actually see what's interesting is that market depth have, has increased over the past few months, which is a sharp contrast to the decline in total value locked. So what this suggests is that there's fundamental differences in how market makers or liquidity providers are treating the, uh, the past few months market volatility. It shows that there's just right now still a lot of risk when it comes to providing liquidity on decentralized exchanges, whereas market making is sort of down to a science at this point on centralized exchanges. It's almost all algorithmic at this point, um, and we can see a sharp increase, uh, not a sharp, just a steady increase in depth despite the volatility. So overall, to summarize the staked Ether se uh, section, it shows that Curve played a very important role in this. Curve remains the primary market for staked Ether, um, and it also plays a role in exchanging a lot of wrapped assets like wrapped BTC. Um, Overall, DEXs, they've grown a lot over the past few years. They play a critical role in the exchange of stablecoins, and stablecoins are probably the most important component of cryptocurrency market structure today. So DEXs are definitely crucial right now. Um, however, they still have a ways to go, especially when it comes to liquidity, total value locked, and just the market share of global volume. So that's all I have for today. Uh, if you want, you can subscribe to Kaiko's newsletters. We have a Monday, this is our data debrief, and the Thursday, this is our deep dive. We do a lot of DEX analysis. We're gonna be looking at a lot of our new um, liquidity data, swaps, mints, and burns for different protocols. If you want us to look at something in particular, just shoot me an email, or uh, that's my email there, and follow me on Twitter if you're interested in more charts. Thank you. And we have a few minutes for questions, if anyone has questions. Thank you for uh, this great talk, very informative. Um, so I was wondering, when you said about the Binance has the biggest volume, how much is that is actually like derivatives? Because that increases volume very dramatically compared to DEXs. Is that due to that, or is it actual like just spot trade in volume? So Thank I you. just charted spot volume here. Okay, thanks so a lot. Not even including derivatives. <laughs> Um, thanks. So I know you focused on Curve V2, uh, V1 for this uh, presentation. Um, I'm just curious if you have any insights on like Curve V2 data versus like Uniswap V3 or anything like that. Uh, yeah, Curve V2, it's coming. <laughs> so okay. we don't, we didn't have the data in time for the presentation, but we'll have it in the next month. So I really wanted to include Curve V2, but not yet. Okay, no worries. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Any more questions?